everyone and thank you for joining us for our webinar today, Best Practices for Managing Software Updates and Upgrades. Please note that all lines are on mute and will remain on mute. If you have any questions, please enter them within the chat box and we'll adjust them during the Q&A period at the end of the presentation. With that in mind, I'd like to introduce Pearman who will begin. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Our webinar today is Best Practices for Managing Software Updates and Upgrades for Sage 300. My name is Pearman. I've been with BAS for over a decade. Joining me today as presenter is Denis Bordeaux, a Senior Sage Consultant. Um, we have Marcel Clem, or organized along with Haley um, and Remington. Uh, we also have Michael Hancock, uh, our technical team member joining us. And this is a very important webinar for us, so we have quite a uh, team uh, joining us today. You probably registered for this session after receiving an email such as the one on the screen. Information we are going to provide for you today are answers to some of the W questions surrounding the upgrades and updates. First, what is the difference between updates and upgrades? We'll look at the rest of the questions and provide answers as we go through the slides. Uh, I would like to mention one more detail here related to hot fixes. So first question is what is a hot fix and are they different from a product update? Um, hot fixes are temporary critical fixes that are usually fixing a single function and will be incorporated in the next product update. So that's what hot fixes are. Talking about upgrades, they are generally released annually. Uh, they are released in August or September of every year. So this year, August 2021, 20, you will get the Sage 300C 2022 version uh, released. Uh, a quick note here, most of our customers are not upgrading every year, so you may be running an older version of Sage 300. Um, Sage, just like any other software company, supports the current version and two versions behind. Uh, we at BAS will try and support older versions than the Sage supported versions that you may be on as long as we can. Um, when you look at your Sage screen while logging in, in the while logging in, the version number shows in the splash screen. Um, so if you have Sage 300C 2021, then you have the latest version. I'm going to show that to you now. I'm going to log in and show how that works. Um, let me move this over here. Make that a little bigger. May not be exactly um, graphically visible. Um, did splash in and, and then it just moved away. So let me just do that again to see and understand what version you're running. So this kind of splashes over very quickly and you may miss it, but it comes up every time you click unless you have suppressed the splash screen. As you could see, it says 300 premium 2021. One more thing I want to do, I show you, is when you log in um, and then click on the help and then click on the about say 300, this shows you for the details um, of your version as well. And then you could go into the system info to gather additional information. Here on the top, it tells you the the version number and the product update number. Now, I'm gonna switch over to, back to the slide to talk a little more about it because this, uh, my example, my VM is too clean for discussion. So let me just close over, cl close out and start over the um, session here. All right, and let me go to the next slide. Okay, so you've seen on the top, um, when you log into Sage, it'll identify your um, version number and the product update. Uh, on the top, 
and then you see the full details of your installs in the detail area. Couple of specifics here. You see the version number and the product update. Um, um, the product update numbers increment with each release. In the details area, you see ID name and the version numbers. I would like to address a couple of details here. Uh, the number in the ID column, you see each module with a number next to it. Sage used to maintain a release numbering sequence for upgrades, eventually changed to the number to match year of the release to reduce the confusion. So uh, basically the current version is 2021. However, the numbering in the program IDs are still maintained for several reasons. Uh, when I say modules, in the example, accounts payable is identified here as AP. So the question is that I have several APs here um, with numbers and letters next to it. So what version is my company on? That's the question. And this is only the case if we have installed the upgrades on top of existing versions. Usually the highest number is the current version and the red check mark, as you could see AP66A with the red check mark um, is the active version for this company. And also if you go further to the right, you will see um, the, uh, the actual year and the uh, product update number. Um, my product update number four is identified right next to the version. Um, so if you have not looked this up in your system, I encourage you to do so. Um, I hope this is clear. We are looking at how to look up product versions and product updates in your environment. Uh, please note that your screens will be different than mine. I use this as an example for our presentation. Uh, here's the list of Sage 300C program version IDs and version numbers. In a typical environment, the program version ID matches for all the modules, um, but some independent software vendor products and Sage Payroll are some of the exceptions. Uh, you will have to look at the red check mark for the active version. Product updates are mostly released quarterly and are numbered accordingly. Since the full version is released in August or September, in December or beginning of January, you get the product update one. April or before, before you get the product update two. By July, PU three, and before September, you'll get your PU four. And these numbers could potentially increment to product update 11, as Sage supports the current version and two versions behind. I don't think uh, I have ever seen a product update 11, but it is a possibility, okay? Um, product updates are usually fixes to the software. However, last few years, Sage introduced uh, product updates that contained enhancement features as well as fixes. The features could change your databases, which could result in breaking the custom integrations, custom reports and forms uh, may stop working. Independent software vendor modules, uh, these are the Sage SDK or system development kit based. So they look and feel like Sage, for example, your EFT module, if you have an EFT module, which is a ISV or independent software vendor module. Uh, they may need to be upgraded or match the version number as well. And there are other products uh, with combined SDK and non-SDK, uh, such as Resource Manager. Uh, so maybe a portion of it is sitting, sitting in your Sage desktop, and the rest might be you know, a, a web version. Um, so there is some of our customer environments are very complex so many integrations. Um, uh, there are also say 300 uh, integrated um, Sage software such as Sage HRIS, which is a human resources information system or Sage CRM. Um, 
CRM stands for customer relationship management, uh, may not function as intended if these product updates are simply applied, okay? So in order for all of them to work in harmony, we may need to install a matching product update or upgrade the applicable integrated solutions as well. So why or when do you need to upgrade or update? The first reason is compatibility, right? Software publishers stop supporting their versions due to end of life, technology changes, and security updates. Compatibility requirement of an operating system, whether it is your desktop, laptop, or a server operating system, uh, may force you to upgrade. Um, say 300 uses Microsoft's uh, SQL as its database. MS SQL need to be compatible with the operating system, the server operating system that it's on. And say 300 should be compatible with the operating system and the database. Another compatibility issue to watch out for is that you may be upgrading an integrated program that requires you to upgrade or update, say, 300. You may simply upgrade or update because of new features introduced or fixes that are needed. So there could be two reasons where you're forced to, or you may be um, needing to update um, either the features of functionality that you wanted to use or fixes to existing issues. Importantly, latest product updates are usually needed for payroll tax tables and other tax filings such as 1099 in US. Payroll tax tables are released for current version and two previous versions. So currently the payroll tax tables are available for say 320, 2021, 2020 and 2019. Whether it is an upgrade or an update, whether you do it or we do it, um, there are certain things um, part of the best practice we recommend is maintaining a separate testing environment. Um, separate meaning a separate application installed outside of the production environment. I understand not all of you have this option, but a disconnected test environment that we can implement the product upgrades and updates initially mitigates the risks for you. Uh, once you test and confirm all systems are functional, then we will implement in your production environment, including all your required workstations and servers. This is done when users are out and the integrations and scheduled sessions are turned off. We do not want anyone or anything process or update data during the implementation. Whether it's a product update or product update, it is the same process we'll be doing. And we may take multiple backups, at times not relying on existing backups. Um, most of the time, databases are backed up into the cloud, but we will take an additional backup just in case. Um, and we will also back up the application, okay? Um, we at BAS have a well-established process to document and schedule the upgrade process. Our formal review process we schedule a session with one of our technician to connect with you and obtain all the environment related details. We have Michael um, joining our webinar today who usually connects with you and gathers the details and update a document called BAS upgrade review process. This document is further analyzed by technical and consulting team members to identify any potential challenges proactively. The findings are notified to you, options are discussed, and proposal uh, submitted for your approval prior to commencing our process. Those who have gone through the upgrade process in the past are familiar with this. You also receive a compatibility document sent to you that identifies hardware requirements for workstations and servers, as well as Microsoft Office, especially Excel. Um, we recommend you contact your account manager 
for upgrades. We rarely have any of our clients doing their own upgrades. Mind you that we do have clients with in staff who are certified consultants, but still uh, they reach out to us to do the upgrades. Now, updates are usually result of a request. Um, our clients initiate this by going to the support site and submitting a request or calling our support desk or emailing support at mass.com. Other than requesting support, we can, um, where can you get updated information? Okay, we have several options here. Uh, one being the BAS website. Let's see what is available for you in the product update area. Uh, let me see if I could just bring that up. So this is our website here, and this addresses um, the, the releases that are out there. And you have more information. There's further details available. You can learn more. Um, and then there is also a video update and also a direct link to contact BAS support. All right. Let me just jump back to the session here. Um, by the way, the slide deck and the recorded video will be available for you in a day or two. Um, so you do not have to write down a lot of these details. All right. Um, so in addition to the BAS website, you can also gather useful up-to-date information from Sage sites. Um, I would like to inform you that as a Sage customer, you can register into the Sage customer portal and look up blogs, detail release information, etc. cetera. Um, customer portal has knowledge base that you can search and look up issues and resolutions. If the resolution states a product update is required, best to plan the proper steps, including contacting BAS. Another area you can log in is Sage City. As a Sage client, you are eligible to register and access these sites. Here you can select your region, um, example Canada, and your product, which is Sage 300, uh, to get more uh, or look up on specific news announcements and alerts. Okay. So let's do a recap. I know I went through this fairly quickly. Um, there's going to be uh, time for questions and stuff, but let's do a recap quickly. Whether it is an upgrade or update, we recommend you gather enough information. Looking at your system, document your Sage environment. We recommend you document your Sage environment at all times. You, some of our clients do it already. That's part of their internal process. Their IT team does it or the accounting team. Of course, keep tracks of the Sage modules and product updates uh, and the workstations and the servers it's installed in and information about the test environment. All that is documented. Um, monitor BAS and Sage sites. So we looked at the BAS site, BAS website on the product update and the Sage sites. One is Sage City. The other one is the customer portal. And you can contact support. Uh, BAS support for issues or contact your account manager if you need a full upgrade. Um, again, have a test environment to mitigate the risk and test uh, on it first. Um, always, we, we say we have a saying in our uh, office, you could never have too many backups. So take multiple backups of your production environment be ready for the downtime during the implementation stage. Uh, so depending on the size and the number of modules and how integrated they are, you could be down for a day or two or half a day, depends on the size and the modules. Um, we have covered a variety of points related to your Sage 300 upgrades and updates. Um, our goal is to provide as much information as possible to assist you. Um, let us see if there are any questions from the participants that we can answer. Uh, Denis will be answering the questions uh, and may pass to Michael for technical or upgrade related questions. Does that sound good?
let me pass back the control to you. So I do have some questions here already. Um, the first one I have is, should we use the same precautions such as backups, tests, productions with a hot fix as with a product update or product upgrade? I uh, yeah, didn't hear a very good question. Um, I always, it, it always come back, comes back to, you know, should something go wrong? Not that we, that's what we wish, but should something go wrong? Can you always go back to a, you know, go back in time to a to a to a certain point, right? So, again, this is from from a risk perspective. If you've made a backup on Monday and you're putting a product update on Friday, if you're totally comfortable at, at restoring back data from a Monday morning, well, that's that's the risk you're covering, right? So, as uh, Perriman highlighted, um, you know, you never have enough backup, right? You never have too many too many backups. So. The idea is really to, you know, not take any risk, whether it's a hot fix, which again, from a risk perspective, a uh, hot fix are uh, most uh, of the time a matter of, um, you know, maybe an updated DLL files or, you know, two or three DLL files or maybe an updated de executable. So less risk of breaking integrations perhaps or breaking the database uh, as opposed to an upgrade, which is, which, which can mean um, uh, modifications to the actual table structure, uh, but again, at the end of the day, is uh, as, as small of a fix that that it can be. Um, you know, when when sometimes, as we say, when things can go wrong, they they do go wrong. So it's always ensuring that you understand uh, at what point can you revert back should anything go bad, go go bad, right? So I guess in short, I mean, I would treat hot fix and full upgrades at the same level just to to really eliminate that that risk. Next question I have here is, what is VAS's responsibility should a product update or hot fix cause other issues or data corruption? I guess if if we go back and really um, clarify, I guess what is VAS's role, right? So VAS is we're an organization that assist uh, and provide services to organization like yours to make the best use of a purchased software, right? An off-the-shelf purchase software. So we're not the original software vendor. We're not the ones that actually designed it. Um, even though it's not like we're saying, hey, we're basically washing our hands and we don't care whether it goes bad because we do uh, internal testing uh, prior to um, prior to, uh, to to basically so recommending installing upgrades, for instance, right? But ultimately, uh, we're not the, um, the, the, uh, the the designer or the programmer, uh, right? Or, and the owner of the, of the software, right? So we can't really offer guaranteed on something that we don't have full control. What we do have control on is to advise of best practice, you know, including uh, hosting this webinar today. Do all workstations need to run the same version of the software, including product update and hot fix? Yeah, that's not a good question. So um, I will say the short answer is yes. Um, and this is also more and more with, you know, larger environment, you typically would have either a, uh, a terminal server or maybe multiple uh, terminal server for load balancing. Uh, ideally environments uh, above, well, I'm gonna say five users, uh, kind of makes sense to centralize uh, the, uh, the, uh, the station so you don't end up having to go around and install those hotfix and, and, and do full workstation setups uh, around the office. Uh, it is, I will say that it, this is uh, kind of a common uh, issue where uh, sometimes a customer will say, well, okay, give us the, give us the fix, provide us with the fix. Uh, I'll go around and I'll basically install this on, on all the stations. And then you, uh, at a later time, you you find out that you know, there's an issue, and then you realize that no, the the hot fix or the updates has not been installed on all all the stations, right? So again, when you're when you think about a fix, right? I mean, if they were put in place for a reason, if not all computers are are using the same flavor of this, that can certainly cause data corruptions, or uh, at the very least, uh, kind of I call these a false positive, right? So just errors that that. Uh, and then we, you get uh, the results in, in, in a bad experience, I guess, from, from a user perspective. So you always want to make sure that from whether it's a tax updates, and we've seen this as well in the past, uh, payroll um, payroll tax updates where customers, when we, we would kind of inventory the list of workstations around, 
and and people would not think about um, users that are not running payroll, uh, but payroll um, may come in the form of like a, of a product updates, right? And again, they affect other modules as well. So um, you always want to make sure that when you install a hotfix or when you install the product updates or even upgrades, by all means, you definitely want to make sure they're they're all on the same on the same version, latest and greatest. And the last question I have here is, what has your experience with regards to stability and quality of product update been from Sage? Um, I go back, I go back in time of quite a few years ago. So I go back in the Sage. I think uh, Perriman showed the versions we're now at what 6.6.8. 6 uh, I go back to the 2.0 version. So that's a, that's a few years ago. Uh, and uh, you know, if you compare it today with back then, it's like you know, product updates were and upgrades were released just to get the software to run, right? We're way beyond those uh, those days. Uh, I will say that Sage has an extensive uh, testing uh, procedures and in, in, you know, in, in, in program in place. Uh, in the case of upgrades, I mean, did you have um, uh, beta testers for upgrades? Um, I know Bass is is part of the Part of the team as well where we would get access to an early uh, sometimes even a beta version of the upgrades where we would have an internal team uh, install and test and try to try to break it as, as we say um, so again experience has been definitely uh, as time goes on it keeps improving um, but again we can never you know fully guaranteed so I mean as much as I can say yeah quality is great by all means, don't let your guards down. And by saying, "Yeah, Denny and Perriman, and I've, I've I got onto this webinar, and they said that you know it, it's stable and it's good." Uh, again, never, never, never forget to to make backups, and I guess I have, a, I have a plan B to to be able to restore at a certain at a certain uh, time. It does look like that's all the questions that we have. So with that being said, I'd just like to thank everyone for taking time out of their busy day to attend, as well as Perriman for presenting and Denny and Michael joining in for questions. Everyone will receive an email with the recording and slide deck when it becomes available. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day.